So Diane from Quotidian Writer, ever the bossy make bossy person, said, hey, let's do a tour of your writing location. So since it videos need to be produced and she is so busy with a million other little things, I decided to go ahead and video the writing loft. So I'm sure you recognize the background that I use in all of the videos we have shot so far. These are items I've picked up over the years when I was at the various auctions when I was working for myself as a antique dealer. Things like the doors, they came from a 1940s um, summer camp thing. You know, the kind where they would send those boys all summer long, or at least six, seven weeks, to a camp in the middle of nowhere. The backside of them are just as cool as the front. The painting was the first ever painting I bought at auction that I bought for myself. And why wouldn't I? The last unicorn. Based on the tapestry that some of you have probably seen in the background of the Harry Potter movies. The typewriter is a fully functional working all the way typewriter. I did at one point try to write a kid's fairy tale on it but unfortunately the wrist cramps were so bad it wasn't even funny i got no joke for it that's how bad the wrist cramps were the phone obviously is not plugged into anything the lamp does work but the cords are such that i doubt i would leave it on for overnight the various helmets i've picked up along the way at different auctions all over the place. The lamp is another one I, I leave on, but only during the videos. It's once again, these these things, 50, 60, 80 years old, you just can't trust the cords. I'd hate to come back in this loft that burned down. Our little hat tree was a display from my shop. It's a little handmade, well, not handmade, but a machine-made kind of spec thing that they, someone probably had made for uh, a very, very specific shop. But I loved the tree look of it, and then we found a good little use of it. I really should have Levi or Limelight and Larceny books up here on this thing, because that's the book I'm supposed to be promoting. I hope Diane doesn't notice, because that just means I'm going to get yelled at. The whole thing ties together. I do not use it for my writing area, but it is in visual backdrop. So when I am writing, which you'll see here in a minute where I do write, that is what I get to look at and it's better than looking at a blank cold wall. Then over here is not my writing area. This is the arts area that my employee AC uses to draw the illustrations you'll be seeing in several of the upcoming fantasy and fairy tale books that we are working on. These are down the line, way, way down the line. We got him a little pad that he can use to sketch on. And then the next backdrop, which you have not seen yet in any of the videos, because it's being saved for fairy tale slash fantasy stuff and these are swords I've collected over the course of good lord 20 years of buying and selling antiques whenever one would pop up at auction if I could afford it I'd buy it most of these are just generic mass-produced things that we call SLOs sword like objects they aren't really swords but some of them a few of them do have some real age like the knightly ones here from the uh, fraternal, uh, fraternal orders. There are various fraternal orders, like the Inter International Order of Oddfellows, I think was one of them, and then the Masonic as well. And I've collected, they end up in people's attics, and then they end up through the auction 50, 70, 200 years later. The chair is a one-off piece, somebody handmade, and it is mas massive, masculine, and I feel like a king when I'm sitting in it, right up until Diane turns me into a jester.
by saying everything you wrote in this entire book is wrong. You need to do it all over again. The place itself was a restaurant and the owner in the 2008 during the financial crash decided she was done serving biscuits and gravy to a handful of people and converted it into a set of apartments. This is one of those apartments. The other side of the restaurant behind the, behind the kitchen that they built in. The other side is the other half of the restaurant. And there's a nice young couple that lives over there. And then they converted the basement into something else as well, another apartment. So she managed to take, make three living spaces out of one massive country restaurant. And then I wanted to show this. I'd walked away and forgot. This is our chaotic board of notes and plotting that me and AC are working on for the some of the fantasy stuff, fantasy stuff coming up. You'll see um, both high slash adventure fantasy and fairy tale retellings as we as Story Garden moves along. Which brings me to the actual workspace which is a Mac system, which I'm not a big fan of the Apple systems, but the Scrivener works the absolute best on Macintosh. It, it, it just, just does. It, it has much more features, it, things that you just cannot do in the Windows version. And then also, if anybody's used Vellum, you, you have to use Apple products for Vellum. And we absolutely use Vellum when we're putting together the final products. And then, some various artwork that I keep. Oh, and then obviously, because everybody needs it, near your front door you should have a katana in reach, just in case you have a visitor you don't want. My, the unicorn painting may have been the first painting I ever got at auction for myself, but this is probably my favorite. The concept of a book just blowing your mind away or blowing your hair back or however you want to say this. It just speaks volumes to me. And then occasionally you may see me with this background if you ever have to do a Zoom meeting with us. And that is something I can roll behind me without having to move the computers around in case I need to take notes or what have you. The downstairs neighbors probably doesn't like to hear it weak, weak, weak and across the floor, but they've been polite and I've put rugs down specifically so I don't annoy the living daylights out of them. And then it has a exactly 16 steps to my favorite part of the loft itself and that is the walkway over top because it was a restaurant the seating area was where you saw my computers the shopping area was up here and it was connected past that wall that they've built over there so that when you were shopping you could look down on the people down in the restaurant below. And this is my favorite because I can sit, not sit, the opposite of sit, I can walk around here every day and do little laps when the weather's too bad for me to go to the parks that are around the area. So I'll walk around up here. Sometimes I will dictate into a my uh, one of those apps that translates things sometimes I will just talk out loud to work out ideas and sometimes most recently when I rehired one of my employees AC from the who used to work for me in the as an antique when I was an antique dealer now I'm using her for her art and then also I will stand up here or walk around up here. She'll open up a Word document and we will revise things. 
on projects we're working on. I, when it comes to first drafting, I still have to kind of sit at a keyboard. But when I work with the other writers, such as Hero Bowen, she will do the first draft, allowing me to have to do the first sets of revisions. And there's, there's nothing quite like walking around up here, hands-free, and just being able to talk and know that AC is changing the words into something better. Plus, the view isn't too bad. So that's my tour of the Riding Loft. I hope it makes some people insanely jealous. So people would just huff about it and say it's a little over the top. But when I was a teenager dreaming of being a writer, you watch the movies and these artists are in these grand places in New York that they can't possibly afford. And all you think is, wow, wouldn't it be great if I just had something like that for myself where I could sit and I could write and pretend like I'm a success. Hopefully I'll have, I'll be able to stop pretending and actually be a success at some point. But until then, buy the little books we put out, join our newsletter. And I believe they say smash that subscribe button. That completes the tour of Jordan Riley Swan's Riding Loft.